dismissal that he is immediately seeking in the course of his motion at this point and his motion to suppress by on September 11, 2008. So, come up with these four points. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll help you back? I do. Judge, again, prior to any testimony on the September 11th motion, the state would object. The court ordered that the parties file motions within 10 days of August 25th, 2009. Clearly, the motion to suppress that was filed on September 11th is outside that order. Well, uh, I could say that uh, the motion dis to dismiss was filed, and the same ar arguments that were in there are in this one. So then I had uh, an amended, I had amended and added to my motion to dismiss then. We'll go ahead with the motion. Go ahead and ask your questions. I, uh, so you were on duty on the uh, morning of March 28th. Excuse me, please. Eight. Could you just state your name and spell your last name for the record? I'm Trooper Deborah Lewis. It's Deborah D E B R A Lewis. It's L E W I S. How are you employed? I work for the Wisconsin State Patrol. How long have you been so employed? I've been employed since uh, February 22nd of 1982. Okay, Mr. Dreesen, you may proceed. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Lewis, uh, as I was asking previously, were you on duty on the early morning hours of March 28th and Saturday of 2009? Yes, I was working a 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. shift for that Friday night into Saturday. Okay. Yes. And uh, at that time, or uh, before about 1.30, quarter to 2, um, on your report here, it says that you observed a car or a truck, and how, what do you think of the, what was the volume of the muffler, or what, you, what, what happened when you seen a car, a truck go by? What did you see? Basically, I was in the parking lot at the Lenru Town Hall where the garage is, and I was facing towards the garage, so I wasn't running any radar or anything like that. Um, and I had my window open because I was talking to Deputy Brian Knapp, who was facing the other direction. And I heard a loud pickup truck go by. I turned my head and said, there goes one to Brian, Deputy Knapp, because you appeared to be traveling in excess of the speed limit, and the exhaust was very loud. Okay. Then, um, how... How loud is very loud compared to like a semi? I would say each semi is different. I, I can't say that it's comparable in the sense that uh, some have different types of exhaust systems on them. And so if you're going to compare it with a, a total different type of vehicle, it's hard to do it once a diesel with, they could have different types of exhaust on them. I don't know. I guess I don't know what you're really oh, asking. Okay, so then um, does a diesel have some kind of an exemption on how loud that it can be when it's going down the road compared to a, a personal motor vehicle? Is there some kind of a, a two-judgment case here in a situation like that? No, there's standards set by the federal government of what an exhaust is supposed to be. If you stop somebody for a loud exhaust, would you give them a ticket? Or loud exhaust? Objection. It's not relevant. Um, I think it is relevant because there, we're debating the reason of why I was stopped, and that's probable cause for a traffic stop, and that's what we're debating right here. The objection sustained. Uh, an officer initiating a stop has discretion about whether or not to issue a citation. Uh, this witness might exercise her discretion in an unknown situation. Uh, really doesn't affect how this case is handled. Okay, so let it be on the record that I was not issued a citation or any ticket for allowed exhaust. Okay. 
Okay. Now, then further on during the evening, you followed, it says on, on here that you followed Officer, officer Knapp and, uh, to uh, assist in, in his stop of my vehicle. So, can you tell me what happened from the time that you um, left the Lenroot Township Hall <coughs> up until the vehicle was stopped? I had to turn around to come out of the parking lot, and by the time I reached 63, uh, both your vehicle and Deputy Knapps were out of sight because of the terrain of the roadway there. And I thought, wow, they're gone. And I pulled out southbound on 63 when I crested the hill. Uh, your vehicles were already turning onto Nelson Lake Road. And it appeared that you were going uh, well over the the speed limit because you shouldn't have made that much ground on me. And so then by the time I turned onto Nelson Lake Road, I'd lost sight again because again the terrain, there's a curve, and then when I came around the curve, uh, he had your vehicle stopped. Um, do you know how far it is from the um, Lent Town Land Route Hall to the corner of Nelson Lake Road? It's about nine tenths of a mile. Um, Sorry to inform you that, but I have a movie here that uh, shows a vehicle with a camera looking at the speedometer and the odometer and the um, uh, roadway, so you can see the roadway at the same time, and it is less than that. The whole incident, even to the bait shop, is... Judge, uh, I'm going to object. There's, this is not a question. This is testimony. Okay. I'll go on the stand later and, and take care of that, but I, I don't believe that. And then uh, also, then once the vehicle was stopped, there was a, um, a search made of my person. And can you tell me what happened there during that time after the vehicle was stopped? I, I don't believe that you were searched. I don't, I don't understand when you claim that you were searched. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, both, uh, it's, it says on your report here that um, Deputy Knapp had removed a small container from Mr. Dreesen's pants pocket. The container appeared to contain marijuana. I believe that, I thought that he had removed uh, something from your pocket, but I, I'm mistaken. I was told later that uh, you had removed it. Oh, okay. So, um, so that you were told later that, but then in your words, and why does it say these words on here that um, you said that Mr. Knapp removed it? So, Mr. Dixon, I get? wrote my report. Uh, the next day after that, or the day after, it's, I believe on Sunday, and I had not conferred with Deputy Knapp in regards to his report or anything like that. I assumed that he had removed it, but it, I have been told later that uh, you were the one that pulled the object out of your pocket when he asked you what it was that was in the pocket. So whether or not I removed the thing from my pocket, or Deputy Knapp removed it. You can't really say. You can't. You you can't. You don't know them. So you were there. You're a witness, and you wrote this, but you really can't say. I know that you kept putting your hands in your pocket, and he kept telling you to remove it. So whether you removed it when you had your hands in back and forth, I don't know. Okay. Uh, then, uh, yeah, so you don't know how many times did I put my hand in my pocket to remove my pocket out of my pocket? Or, do you remember any of that? No, I just know that you continually complained that uh, we were violating your constitutional rights and you kept putting your hands in your pocket, pull them out when he asked you to pull your hands out of your pocket, and you put your hands back in your pocket several times, contrary to what he was asking you to do. It's for our safety that your hands are visible to us. 
So in your uh, squad car or your state trooper vehicle, uh, what kind of equipment do you have? Do you have any video survey equipment, video surveillance equipment in there? I have a video camera, yes. And when uh, you stopped this incident, did you bother to turn the video camera on? The way that our cameras work is they automatically come on with the, the lights, the emergency lights. It did come on, but because I was behind Deputy Knapp's vehicle, I turned it off because all I get is the glare from his uh, overhead lights. So it was not on. And from the time of the stop, I'm sorry you have to backtrack a little here, from Lenroot Town Hall to where the stop, when, if any, when were the lights turned on of the vehicle? When were your warning lights turned on? And Officer Knapps, at what period? I don't recall when Officer N or Deputy Knapp turned his on. Um, I believe that we were at, we were going to try to follow you, and so I don't know when I turned mine on, but I know that I, I turned the camera off. I don't know when I exactly turned. Um, so if what you're asking, Mr. Dreesen, I don't have any video of your vehicle whatsoever on my Yes, that was just one of the things I'm asking. I have video of it. I've been also asking to uh, kind of, I would maybe say, pin you down on the best things that you can remember of that night and compare them to what you had written to see if, if uh, it's consistent enough to be a uh, for it to be a witness, a credi credible witness of the incident compared to what you're saying now compared to what you wrote on your report. And that's my basis here because I'm trying to say that uh, there was no probable cause. So I'm testing to see what the court says, whether or not there was probable cause for this stop. 